Good morning. In a few moments, we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. Like they did in Acts 20 and 7, the disciples came together on the first day of the week to break bread. Also in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 25, the church came together to partake of the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week. We are told to remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. These two tables we have here in front of us have the inscription, Do this in remembrance of me. We find this statement when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper in Luke twenty-two nineteen. We think of all the physical pain that Jesus had upon the cross. This morning, I'd like to focus on the emotional stress that he suffered and endured from the Garden of Gethsemane to the cross. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he asked the disciples to wait while he prayed alone. He fell on his face and prayed, and that's found in Matthew 26, 39. His words, let this cup pass from me, is repeated thir- three times. Luke 22, verses 44 through 45, we are told he prayed earnestly. His sweat became like great drops of blood. Let's consider the anguish and loneliness he must have felt knowing that these cruel events were about to take place. Then the betrayal of one of his disciples, one he had picked to help him with his ministry, Judas. Luke twenty-two forty-eight, Judas would, be, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And then Matthew twenty-six fifty, friend, do what you came to do. This was a treacherous kiss under the skies of friendship. Even though Jesus knew this was going to take place, it had to hurt him emotionally. Then there was Peter's denial. Peter was one of the closest disciples of Jesus, and he stated that he would never betray Jesus and that he would die for him. Three times Peter denied Jesus. In verse 22, 61, and then the Lord turned and looked at Peter. What a look of sorrow and pain Jesus must have felt. Then Jesus is taken before the mob in Matthew 27, verse 22. An innocent man accused of things that were not true. 1 John 3, 5 tells us, in him there is no sin. Hebrews 4, 15, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. He was condemned to death by a mob of people that he had healed and that he had tried to teach. Then the humiliation he suffered on the cross. Verse, in Luke 23, verses 35 through 37, rulers scoffed at him and the soldiers mocked him. He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one, And if you are the king of the Jews, then save yourself. And then finally, in Matthew, in Mark uh, 15, 34, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Being separated from the Father, the ultimate disparity, the darkness of being separated from God. So let's remember the great sacrifice made by the Son of God for us. Let's remember him while we're partaking the Lord's Supper. Do this in remembrance of me.